Hey, it's Tom here and welcome back to the channel. Now in this video, I want to share a really three pretty significant updates out of Seritage Growth Properties that we've had uh, over the past couple of weeks to kind of a month maybe. Uh, the first one is around the SRG property portfolio and a little more clarity around what we've got uh, in terms of how Seritage intends to use each of those different properties. They're uh, selling several properties, they're going through quite an extensive redevelopment project with a lot of these properties as well and and uh, for a long time it's been a little bit of a black box in terms of trying to figure out what each property is worth and what Seritage intends to do with each property. So we've firstly got a little more clarity on that which I'd like to share in this video. Uh, the second one which is quite a big issue kind of when it comes to SRG is around their debt. So we've recently got quite a major update around the debt so uh, as it currently stands SRG has a 1.6 billion dollar loan from Warren Buffett's Birch Hathaway and we've now got a good update on what uh, kind of meeting those debt obligations is going to look like and again a little more clarity for what things might look like on the debt front kind of moving forward with SRG and thirdly we have a couple of recent SEC filings from Eddie Lampert who is effectively a controlling shareholder at Seritage and some potential signs and something to keep an eye on around uh, Eddie Lampert may be thinking at least about selling some of his SRG position. Now just before we get into that I do want to mention that uh, in the month of November just finished I actually did re release uh, quite a bit of content over my second YouTube channel the Investing with Tom podcast uh, and one of the episodes actually included quite a bit of in-depth discussion on heritage so uh, that was the recent episode that I did with Matt Peterson so if you want to check that out if you haven't already uh, first link in the description will be the Investing with Tom podcast um, but I also released uh, quite a bit of other content on that uh, YouTube channel during November had an episode with Neil from The Adventurous Investor, had an episode with Kalechi Iwaba, and also with Michael Schmidt. So if you want to go and check out any of those episodes, that will be the first link in the description. Okay, so firstly, let's talk about the update for the portfolio of Seritage Growth Properties and each of the real estate assets that they own. Now, if we go back to sort of uh, mid to late 2020, uh, I did a live stream here on the YouTube channel, Inv Investing with Tom, uh, with stock compounder Brad Kellner. And Brad did some really great work on basically trying to figure out what each of these heritage growth properties um, assets, each of their real estate investments, uh, what those are worth. And if we look at the value of the property portfolio, we back out the debt and we kind of divide that by the number of shares outstanding and also some operating partnership units, which I'll get to later in the video when we talk about Eddie Lampert, we could come up with a rough sort of liquidation value for Seritage. And at the time that estimate came in at about $35 per share, that's kind of roughly where we thought the liquidation value was, um, but it was a little bit of a black box. So we were kind of just going through, or Brad I should say was going through the list of every property that was on Seritage Growth Properties website, um, basically looking up comps and trying to figure out what similar properties in the area had sold for recently uh, but we didn't actually know kind of what the plan was for each property moving forward with Seritage. We didn't know uh, which ones they were planning to actually liquidate and sell. We knew they were going to do that to some of them, but we didn't know which ones exactly. Uh, we knew that they intended to develop a lot of their properties and move rents from maybe 4 or $5 a square foot with old Sears tenants to closer to $20 per square foot with new tenants and new, newly developed properties. And we also knew that in some areas like the um, Premier Dallas property for example they intended to do quite a bit of densification so they weren't only increasing the uh, rental rates per square foot but they were also increasing the number of square feet kind of available for rent but just in the last month with our uh, most recently quarterly financial update for Seritage, uh, we actually got kind of a financial supplement type document out of SRG that is publicly available on the uh, investor relations page, which actually goes into an enormous amount of detail about exactly what they intend to do with each property. And uh, this is something that I think has been a little overlooked by a lot of Seritage investors and uh, something that I'm going to be diving into a lot in maybe the next week or two. So I'll put up some screenshots here so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, but if you scroll down to the bottom of this financial supplement document uh, from SRG, you will see uh, literally they've categorized every single uh, property into a category in terms of what they want to do with it. So we have a big list of multi-tenant retail properties. Uh, we also have uh, some other retail joint ventures, uh, which, which SRG operate as well. We have uh, quite a long list of residential properties. 
And then we also have uh, the big premium mixed use properties like the Dallas one that I just talked about earlier. And we also have other properties, which my interpretation of other properties is basically they intend to sell these properties in order to generate some cash flow to develop the properties that uh, they can earn higher rates of return on. And with each of these properties, we can see what the leasable area is, uh, how much of that leasable area is actually signed up or whether it's even got tenants at all right now uh, and kind of what percentage of that area is leased. And we can also see the uh, land area, how many acres each of those properties actually are. So now that we've got this clarity, I think it's going to be a really good exercise to kind of work through to uh, kind of revalue the SRG portfolio. And that's something uh, that I wanna work through over the next couple of weeks. Try to figure out how much cash we can actually expect to be generated from the other properties that presumably SRG intend to sell. And then uh, try to get a good feel for the potential uh, future rental income that can come off the rest of the property portfolio. And since doing that first live stream with Brad on Seritage, it looks like commercial property values in the US are up maybe somewhere in the five to 10% range. And since Seritage does actually have quite a bit of leverage, quite a bit of debt, um, you know, the growth in equity will probably be much greater than five to 10% uh, or the growth in liquidation value should be greater than that for Seritage because it is leveraged. Uh, so I think it is probably a good time to revisit valuation for SRG in general. Uh, and this is going to be a very, very useful resource for when I dive into that. Okay, so let's talk about the second update from SRG uh, for this video, which is a press release that came out on the 29th of November. And uh, this was titled Seritage Growth Properties Announce Amendment to Senior Secured Term Loan Agreement. So this relates basically to their $1.6 billion that they have borrowed from Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway. And the relatively new CEO at Seritage, uh, Andrea Olshan, has talked about this loan uh, in reasonably recent interviews, maybe in the last six months. She said that, you know, uh, Berkshire is a great lender to have. Uh, that it was fantastic because in, in 2020, when SRG was really struggling, you know, they didn't get pulled through bankruptcy court or anything like that. Um, so they're a great lender to kind of have in one respect because they have a very long term orientation. They're probably the last people that's going to try to take over the business when you're, when you're struggling. Um, but they are paying a high interest rate on this debt, and it is quite a lot of debt in the grand scheme of Seritage. So they're paying about 7% interest on this one. $6 billion loan and they're also paying I think a 1% interest rate on the uh, $400 million so to take it from $1.6 billion to $2 billion which they do have the capacity to have if they reach certain targets I believe they're paying about a 1% uh, interest rate on that amount of money that they haven't even borrowed yet <laughs> so um, yes they're a nice lender to have but they are an expensive lender to have and Andrea Olshan uh, like I say in recent interviews had expressed uh, you know, their interest in looking into potential other kind of financing options that would be cheaper and that would potentially be at an individual property level rather than at a overall heritage growth properties level like the current Berkshire loan. So let me read uh, kind of the key parts out of the press release and the update here from Seritage. So um, basically they're saying they're making an amendment to the $1.6 billion loan from Berkshire uh, previously announced on July 30, 31st, 2018. So under the terms of of the amendment, the companies mutually agreed that the make whole provision of the agreement shall not be applicable to prepayments of the term loan facilities principal. Additionally, the company has agreed that at, Sirit at Siritage's election, the agreement may be extended for two years from July 31st, 2023 to July 31st, 2025, provided that the term loan facilities principal has been reduced to $800 million by the maturity date. So put simply, uh, Seritage owe $1.6 billion to Berkshire. Uh, they have a big lump sum payment of $1.6 billion due uh, in July 2023, and they have amended that agreement. So uh, they can now uh, pay off about $800 million of that loan, half of the loan if they choose to, and they can basically kick the can down the road a little bit in terms of paying the other $800 million. So the payment moves from July 2023 to July 2025. 
So then we have to think about how this change, I guess, might look for SRG moving forward. So I think it's probably pretty likely, given the things that uh, Andrew Olshan and the management team at Seritage have said over the past few months, that they are going to kind of go ahead and look at property, property level financing. And uh, hopefully, as a Seritage shareholder, this is going to be a whole lot cheaper interest rate than the 7% that they're currently paying to Birch Hathaway. So um, if they can pull this off, uh, which I think they have a pretty good probability of, of doing, if they they have a bunch of individual kind of cash flowing properties and they plan to get property level financing. Uh, it looks like they're probably going to get about $800 million worth of new debt, probably from that property level financing in order to pay off half of that Berkshire loan. Now, hopefully, like I say, those property level loans will be at a much cheaper interest rate, uh, but that will still leave about $800 million uh, due 2025 paid at about 7%. So, you know, even if they can chop that interest rate from, say, 7% to 5% or 4% or 3%, I don't quite know what the number might be. Um, but even if they can chop it from 7% to 5%, uh, that 2% interest rate saving on $800 million is a very significant sum for a company like Seritage. And of course, it also means that Seritage are not going to have to try and come up with $1.6 billion uh, in July 2023. SRG does not have $1.6 billion. Uh, they do certainly have liquidity that they can make available from selling a lot of properties. And that's something, like I say, I'll dig into with uh, this new clarity on exactly what property are likely to be sold but uh, it means that they don't have this huge lump sum payment due 2023 they can hopefully get some cheaper financing for a good portion of that loan and then uh, you know push that big debt obligation a couple years down the track for the other half of the 1.6 billion Berkshire loan Okay, and the third and final update here out of Seritage uh, is actually two recent SEC filings from Eddie Lampert. Uh, firstly, we had a, an S3 filing, a Form S3, which is usually a filing that goes out when a company wants to do some sort of capital raise, which was kind of interesting to see. Uh, and the second one was a 13D uh, from Eddie Lampert. And basically, it looks like these filings are essentially both related to Eddie Lampert converting a lot of his operating partnership units into Class A Heritage Growth Property Shares. Now, if you don't know already, uh, operating partnership uh, units or operating partnerships more generally are a pretty common way of how different real estate investment trusts uh, kind of set up so structured. And I'll put up a screenshot here from a good PowerPoint that was kind of floating around on Twitter yesterday around this. Um, basically, these operating partnership uh, units that Eddie Lampert owns, who, like I say, is a, effectively a controlling shareholder in Seritage, uh, these are convertible on a one-to-one -one basis to Class A shares in Seritage. So um, if you know Eddie Lampert has a million operating partnership units, for example, he can convert those to a million um, Class A shares in Seritage and sell them on the open market or in privately negotiated transactions if he wants to. And if you want to see uh, quite a lot of you know in-depth commentary on this, uh, Brad Brad Kellner actually did a really good video on this recently. But I will read kind of the one key statement that that at least I picked up in the 13D that came out from Eddie Lampert. So it says that on the 30th of November, and there's a few different trusts and things listed here. Uh, it says that upon effectiveness of the Form S3 that uh, I just mentioned. Uh, that these trusts will register the offering and resale of one uh, Class A shares held by Eddie Lampert, Nicholas Trust, Nina Trust, and Class A shares that will be issued to them upon redemption of their respective OP units. Uh, Mr. Lampert currently believes that based on current trading prices, the Class A shares are undervalued. None of Mr. Lampert, etc., etc., um, currently intend to sell Class A shares through an underwritten offer. However, Mr. Lampert, the Nicholas Trust, and the Nina Trust expect to sell Class A shares registered pursuant to the registration statement from time to time in privately negotiated transactions directly to purchases or through brokerage transactions depending on a variety of factors um, and a whole bunch of legal kind of speak after that. So effectively what I'm seeing here and amongst all the legal uh, language and kind of reading between the lines here is that Eddie Lampert has converted a lot of his operating partnership units to uh, Class A shares in Seritage. Now this doesn't dilute existing Class A shareholders or anything like that. If you buy uh, SRG uh, in the public markets, um, you know you should have been accounting for these operating partnership units already. So it's not diluting, diluting you as a shareholder or anything like that. But I think it does uh, potentially give Eddie Lampert the flexibility to more quickly sell his ownership in SRG if he wants to. 
and I'm not super familiar with all of the reasons other than just simply wanting to sell Seritage uh, around why Eddie Lambert might do this. I'll put up another slide here, which again was shared on Twitter by uh, David Park. So thanks David if you're watching. Uh, that the conversion of operating partnership units to Class A shares is a taxable event. So potentially it's some sort of uh, tax related thing that Eddie Lambert is doing here, but um, it really doesn't change the way that we should value Seritage Growth Properties assets. You know, the value of the property doesn't change, the value of the, uh, all, the, all the debt obligations and that sort of thing don't change just because Eddie Lambert sells shares or, is, or he converts his operating partnership units to Class A shares, but it certainly is something to keep an eye on here. And one final thing on this filing from Eddie Lampert is actually that Matt Peterson, who uh, again I mentioned I did a recent podcast with on the Investing with Swan podcast uh, YouTube channel, uh, he actually chimed in a little bit here on Twitter and said, uh, it's very possible uh, this is in response to you know maybe this is tax related so he said that's very possible also possible that ESL has been liquidated which is Eddie Lambert's sort of investment partnership also possible that ESL has been liquidated and the SRG units are non-transferable um, like I said earlier <laughs> none of this impacts valuation um, and he again goes on to share that document which has all the individual properties for Seridge, uh like I mentioned in the first part of the video. So there you have it, those are my three uh, kind of big updates for Seridge Growth Properties. We've got a lot more transparency around the individual uh, real estate assets, which is great. Uh, we potentially have some more attractive debt terms coming, which for, as an SRG shareholder, I think is fantastic. And we also kind of have to keep an eye, I think, on what uh, Eddie Lampert is up to with his, uh, his OP units converted to Class A shares. And uh, he is a very large shareholder, so if he does sell any of those Class A shares, we'll be notified uh, pretty much immediately. But uh, that is maybe just something to keep an eye on as well. So that's it for me for this one. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit like and hit subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.